This screencast covers the materials in Module 2, Lesson 22, and is based on assorted problems from the problem set. Okay, we're going to do some division today, and, and we now have two digit quotients. I, I kind of glossed over some of the estimating yesterday, and I was somewhat remiss in that. So we're going to talk about our step of estimating. Remember, we're going to estimate, we're going to solve, and we're going to check. All right. Well, what are we going to do to estimate? First, we're going to round our 28 to the nearest 10, and that would be 30. Now, we're only going to look at this part of the problem right now. And the 9's no good because 9 hundreds, like there's no 30's in 9 hundreds. So we're now going to look at 94 tens. What's really close to 94 tens that's divisible by 30? The answer is 90 tens. And 90 tens divided by 30 is 3 tens. Let's set up the problem. Since my estimate is 3 tens, I'm going to record 3 in the tens place in my quotient. Now we're going to actually multiply 28 times 3, and I get 84. We'll now subtract. I get a difference of 10. All right, well, that's good because 10 is less than 28. But I have 10 tens now. And that can't be divisible by 28, so we're going to regroup by bringing down my 0 here. Now I have 100 ones. So 100 ones is really close to 90 ones. And again, 90 ones divided by 30 equals 3 ones. That works out well. So we're going to put 3 in the ones place. Again, we multiply 3 times 28, I get 84. All right, now we'll subtract, and I get 16. 16 is less than 28, so we have 33 with a remainder of 16. Now we check. We need to multiply our quotient times our divisor. I'm going to put the 33 on the bottom, because I can use that multiplication by 3 twice. So 3 times 8 is 24 regroup. 3 times 2 is 6 plus 2 is 8, 84. And now I'm just going to put my 0 in and we're going to find the sum of our partial products. I get 924. Now I take my product, I'm going to add my remainder and I get 940. So I have a good match between my check and my dividend. Let's do another problem working with some of our estimation and division. Okay, once again we'll do another problem. Again, two-digit quotients and we're going to use that estimation again. Now, I'm going to uh, look at some rounding here. I could round this di divisor here to 20 by rounding it to the nearest 10. But I'm going to actually round it to 25. I like to look at my opportunities. And 25 is really easy to work with, so I'm going to use 25. Now once again, I'm going to look at the hundreds. Uh, there's only five hundreds, so I can't divide that by 25. But now I have 55 what? I have 55 tens. I'm going to round my 55 tenths to 50 tenths. And 50 tenths divided by 25 is 2 tenths. Let's set up the problem. So I have 553 divided by 23. I used my estimate of 2 tenths, so I'm going to put 2 in the tenths place in my quotient. I'm now going to multiply 23 times 2, and I get 46. We'll subtract, and I get a 9. Alright, so now 9 
is 9 tens. We're going to regroup. It becomes 93 ones. Okay, so I have, I'm going to do my 25 once again. We're, we're going to round my divisor to 25. And I'm looking at 93 tens. And I want something that's easily divisible by 25. The closest number I can get is 100 tens. Or, excuse me, 100 ones. It's ones this time because we're in the ones place. Hmm, that would be four. Let's give it a shot and see how that works. We can always adjust if uh, we find that things are, are off, too big or too small. All right, so now I'm going to multiply 23 times 4. I'm going to actually do this little shortcut here. And I get 92. Okay, that works fine. So 4 goes into my quotient. Now we'll subtract 93 minus 92. I get 1. I get 24 with a remainder of 1. We'll now check by multiplying my quotient times my divisor. And then we'll add our remainder. 3 times 4 is 12. Regroup the 1. 3 times 2 is 6 plus 1 is 7. We're multiplying from two by 2 in the tens place. So we put a 0 in our ones place. 2 times 4 is 8. And 2 times 2 is 4. We find the sum of our partial products. I get 553. We're going to add our remainder, which is 1, or we had 552, now we add our remainder, which is 1, and we get 553. Again, we have a match with our check and our dividend. Okay, we'll do one more example and go on to some word problems. Okay, 614. Now, again, I'm going to do something a little unusual here. I find 15 really easy to work with. And since 15 is right between 10 and 20, either way around it, I'm going to be fairly far off. I know uh, my 15s really well. It's pretty simple. And I'm just going to record some 15s here. I have 15, 30, 45, 60, 75. It's really quite easy to do. We can also look at two 15s is 30. So four 15s must be 60. All right, so let's do our estimating. I'm going to leave that at 15. And now I have 61 tens to work with. Well, I see that 61 is very close to 60. So we're going to write 60 tens divided by 15 equals 4 tens. Let's set up the problem. All right, so our partial, our, our estimate here is 4, so I'm going to put 4 in the tens place because it's 4 tens. I'm going to multiply 15 times 4, and that's 60. I subtract, I get a 1. Now I'm going to bring down that 4. And now I have 14 ones. Well, I notice that 14 is less than 15. So... I can't get a 15 out of a 14. So what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to put 0 because there are no 15s in 14. So I'm going to multiply 0 times 15. In some ways this is an unnecessary step, but some people like to do that. And I get a 14, so I'm going to put a remainder of 14. Let's go check. I'm going to have 40, my quotient, times 15. 5 times 0 is 0. 5 times 4 is 20. Put a 0 in our 1's place because we're multiplying by 1 in the 10's place. Simple enough. And I get 600. The next step is to add my remainder. 600 plus 14 is 614. Once again, we have our match. On to the word problem. 27 students are learning to make balloon animals. There are 172 balloons to be shared equally among the students. How many balloons are left over after sharing them equally? 
Well, when you see those words left over, we're going to be thinking about the remainder. So, we have 172 balloons, and we're going to distribute them among 27 students. So we know the whole. We have to determine the part. Now, I can't make 27 uh, individual parts here, so I'm going to use my uh, uh, ellipsis, and we don't know what the parts are, but we know that there are 27. So, what am I going to do? I'm going to take 27, and I'm going to divide it into 23 equal parts. 27 equal parts, 172, divide it into 27 equal parts. So we have 27 into 172. We can use our estimating. I'm going to think that 27 is close to 30. 172, well, let's see, 3, 18 works. Put in our 0. And we can divide that and get a 6. Let's see how that works. I'm going to multiply 6 times the divisor. And I get 42. 12 plus 4 is 16. 162. Put my 6 in my quotient. I subtract and I get a 10. So that's my remainder of 10. So how many are left over? 10 balloons. are left over. Alright, not that bad. Let's go on to the part B. If each student needs seven balloons, how many more balloons are needed? Well, that's simple enough. We know that we have how many students? We have 27 students. And we can again use our tape diagram. And we're going to represent 27 students. Uh, 1, 2, and 27. Now in this case, I know how much goes in each of these boxes. It's 7. So we need 27 sevens. And now we're not going to find the parts. We're going to find the whole. Notice that when we had the whole and broke it down into parts, we divided. If we have the parts that are all the same value, and we are going to combine them, we are doing the inverse, we are multiplying. So all we have to do is 27 times 7, we get a 49, regroup, 14 plus 4 is 189. So how many more balloons are needed? Well, how many balloons did we have in the first place? Well, let's do a tape diagram, I'm going to change colors. Um, I know that I need 189, and I can do this a couple ways. Let's move that down if I can. Yep, doesn't quite work. Alright, so I could do it this way. And I can have 172, and I could kind of put a bracket in here and put a question mark. So we want to get that right to the same size. Another way of doing this is take a bracket above it, 189, 172, and a question mark. In this case, we know the whole. And we know one of the parts, we have to find the other. This represents subtraction. So I have 189 minus 172. I get a 7 and I get a 1. 17. So I can now write 17 more balloons are needed.